Hello, today I have another very requested power bank. We will see how this one does. I picked up the Shargig Storm 2. My expectations are low after the Storm 2 Slim showing, but maybe this time things will be different. This has a bigger battery and more batteries, so hopefully it can perform at a higher level than its smaller counterpart. If you want to make a suggestion for a video, I do use viewer suggestions to get things on the channel, so leave it down in the comments section. Enough comments usually get to the spot on the channel. So does this power bank have what it takes to get through the testing, and can it be the best power bank out there? One way to find out. In this series, I try to answer the question, which power bank do I want to get? The videos get technical, so hang on and ask questions if you don't understand something. The performance is measured and compared to near competitors. In this video, the Shark Geek will be reviewed to find out the charging capabilities to help you make an informed buying decision. As I slowly build up the list of power banks tested, hopefully we will find some better ones. If you want to help support the channel, there's a link to subscribe, patron, super button, and my website down in the description. Special thanks to my patrons and channel supporters. Well, here it is, the Shark Geek 100 Power Bank Storm 2 STM 2-2 that has been requested for quite a long time and is finally making it onto the channel. This power bank is a little more advanced in that it has both power delivery and quick charge capabilities on three ports and a DC port. It can deliver 5, 9, 12, 15, and 20 volts on the USB-C and 5, 9, and 12 volts on the USB-A port, as well as charge from those voltages on the USB-C. This also has the PPS mode on both USB-C ports. The 100 watt port can go up to 5 amps, so Samsung super fast charging should be on the menu. The other port is lower power though, so 3 amp limit here. This power bank limits the power between the various ports to 100 watts, which is a very reasonable limit. They didn't take all the ports and add them together, thankfully. So this may have a chance of actually delivering on its promises. The unique feature of this power bank is that it also has the DC output. This is limited to 3 amps, but it can do a range of voltages, so you can set what you need. This is actually quite useful. It does share with the high power USB-C port, so you may need to be careful here. There is a warning about sharing these ports, and there is no lockout to prevent damaging something. The user manual is nice because it includes graphics that show what the ports do and how much power they can deliver with various devices plugged in. I like this method of showing the capabilities. There was a mistake on the published web data. Not a big deal. I know I make plenty of mistakes. It does have some safety listing markings, PSE. Not sure what the affiliation is with that one, but it is nice to see something. When looking through the shell of this power bank, we can see the cells and the circuit board, which is nice. If you like that look, which I have to admit I do like the look, we can also see the Samsung branded 18650 battery cells. Without having to tear down the pack, seeing the premium cells being used is nice. I didn't look them up any further, I let the measured performance speak for the device. In looking at the claimed output rates, I made a chart of devices and changed it around to the number of times the power bank can do each of these things with these devices. It looks like with the energy in this device, it can pretty much do anything. This assumes a 50 watt output limit. The power bank can do 100 watts of output power and it can do it until almost fully discharged. I fully cooled the power bank between tests and this thing overheated just on the line of being fully depleted. This is actually a win. It basically delivered all of its energy into the output before shutting down. Yes, after shutting down, you will get the battery over temperature warning and this is expected. If you pull the remaining energy out, it switches to the low energy warning. I have to say, Make sure you turn off the screen. If this thing goes fully dead, I don't know what happens, but it might not be able to turn back on. And even at 0%, it keeps the screen active. With the display on this thing, we get a lot more detail of the inner workings though. We can see how current is moving between the different parts and also look at the electronics temperature and battery temperatures. You probably will wanna change the default setting on the display from staying on forever to turning off after a period of time. The Storm 2 power bank used a little more energy during the charging cycle, but did charge moderately quickly. At one hour and 32 minutes to a full charge, it isn't bad. It does take most of the advantage of a 100 watt adapter, and it still gets there in a reasonable time. The charging is basically right at the maximum for a 100 watt USB-C port, topping out at just over 90 watts into the power bank. That's not bad, very usable. This means that this thing can actually charge up pretty fast, faster than a lot of the other power banks I've seen. It tapers down the power, but not for too long, and then the on-screen charging percentage seems to be very accurate as well. The battery percentage appears quite good, but the voltages and currents are certainly for indication only. They bounce around and change throughout the operation range, so again, for indication only. This power bank is also pretty lossy. At 25 watts power lost from the wall at 50 watts and 28% lost at 100 watts, this isn't winning any efficiency awards. Okay, time to weigh this thing, and it's pretty heavy. 
Overall, this power bank is about 600 grams, which we will see in the density chart later on isn't winning any awards. I checked the packaging weight and the Shargig is 337 grams of waste to have a fancy box, and it's just not worth anything. The USB-C cable, which has been tested and is on the list of cables already, was 46 grams and it is actually a pretty good cable. The power bank has a middle of the road form factor. It isn't bad. It is narrower than the Anchor offerings, but thicker than the Ugreen. So it will fit in most laptop bags with a bulge, but at least it isn't as boxy as the Anchor. The Bassias, which I didn't get out here, still has that nice flat design that I like. The voltages all stay within the tolerances of USB power delivery specification, which is nice to see. This power bank had general compatibility with any chargers I used. So this will charge very slowly, but still charge even with a five watt USB-A brick. This is great to see. Next, I checked the pass-through and USB capabilities of this power bank, and it turns out Shargeek was able to keep the USB-C port operating during multiple functions with the other USB-C port. There were some errors, so it won't always stay on, but in this case, after negotiation was figured out, it did keep going when the power goes out on the other port. It isn't really a UPS. One good thing is that the power out of the second USB C port is lower, so the device won't deplete the battery slowly over time. I was not able to get a 20 volt mode from the second port with that charger plugged in though. The pass through worked as expected, charging the battery and splitting some of that power off to the output. The watts change on the input as it passes the power through to the output. One note is this power bank wastes about two watts plugged in and fully charged. This power bank has a screen timeout feature, and I didn't explicitly see a low power mode, but it appears to keep the USB-A port active if the screen is on. Let me know if you've had some more long-term testing with this. The USB-C port appears to power off after 30 seconds or so. When you power the device off, then it shuts things down. If you set this to keep the screen on, my worry is that it will deplete the battery flat. So it is a little annoying to have to scroll through a menu to turn the screen off. This should be set to timeout by default, but instead it is set to stay on forever. So first thing when you get this, you may want to change this setting to turn the screen off with a timeout. Shark Geek is well within the 100 watt hour requirement for extra non-permitted air travel of power banks. This is a little heavy, but it can still be a carry on power bank. The form factor is a little better. The discharge power level of this power bank means that the thermals were much more reasonable. Not saying this is a 200 watt power bank or something unreasonable means that it can do what it says and it doesn't get too hot. In the charging mode, it kept things mostly under control. It looks like it has a hot spot where the voltage converter is located. This takes the battery voltage and changes it to what the output or input needs. The hotspot is an inductor used within that circuit. This is the main power supply section. This component gets hot and this is normal. The question is how much of that heat transfers into the board and is allowed out of the unit. At 50 watts discharge, the case was just warm to the touch, but it wasn't burning hot or anything. At 100 watt, things change a little. It has metal ends or metalized plastic ends, and these transfer heat quite a bit more easily to your skin. So the nearly 60 degree case is not comfortable to pick up at the 100 watt discharge. Again, the hot spot shows where the voltage converter is located. The power bank did have some renegotiation time and sometimes operated nicely and other times behaved a bit weird during the plug and unplug process. I tried various devices and plugs and unplugs. The USB-A port shuts off with other USB-C port being used, but this isn't supposed to do that. Not sure if it does it all the time. I could see this being an issue with some other devices on the market creating power loops. The 100 watt port drops to 65 watt with the use of the other ports. In terms of value, this ends up near the bottom of the scale. This power bank is expensive. It is less expensive than it used to be, but it is still priced at the premium end of the market and it, well, isn't. It is an average performing device being sold at the top tier price point. It has a unique feature which the others don't have in the DC output, but getting a cable is still required to connect to your other devices, so I don't see this as a value add. It also disrupts the USB-C functionality, so I don't know, value add or value detract. You have to make that decision. On to the density chart. Another way to look at the data is the power density, which tells you how fast you can access the energy. This is where at 100 watts, this is a good performer. It isn't making over the top claims, so it can do it most of the time and has a strong performance here. Next, I am looking at the energy density of these power banks. Energy density is shown two ways with both the weight and the physical size in liters. The higher the energy density, the better. These more expensive power banks stand out. The energy density of this power bank is low in terms of its weight, but is on the higher size for the physical size of the power bank. So it may be heavy, but at least it contains 
that weight in a relatively small package. Overall, this power bank is average. Price Select gets premium to add two things, a DC out jack and use Samsung battery cells, which may lead to a longer service life. There are control issues you will run into, like making sure the screen turns off and making sure the power bank doesn't drain itself flat by accident. The efficiency is average, which I put a lot of weight on. The performance is above average in terms of features, lots of features, so many things, but make it reliable, efficient, and make it not overheat. This one, like the Slim, did overheat, as do most higher output power banks, but it did better than the Slim in that it didn't just quit after a few minutes. Most of the time, you won't be driving it that hard anyway, so you probably won't have issues with this one. The screen has so much information on it, but the information it shows isn't very accurate. So it's great that I have five significant figures of watts, but that number changes from 98 to 102 watts while asking for 100 watts, so all the decimals don't mean anything. Like I said, lots of features. I'm still on the efficiency thing. The Anker 250 watt or the ZMI are better here and kind of better at all the metrics. I would take either of those over this power bank at a similar price point. The feature sets of those other power banks actually tie in better with USB devices and how they behave. Things like having a clear low power mode and having it shut down and not drain the battery with nothing connected are important. The Shargeek seems to lack them and makes me think the intention is you are going to stare at the screen every time you use it and watch with intent how the numbers change as if they mean something. Okay, I am being mean. It is fine. It isn't a bad power bank in the end. It's just not the best one. It is average. Someone has to be average. This is it, but packed with features. It has a timer for some reason. Thermal design is not amazing. No, let's leave it at that. Average of averages. There will be an affiliate link in the description if the DC output or the branded battery cells are something you actually need. Okay, well, it's another power bank. This is tested and stickered. The database of power banks is still in process. It is behind the times in terms of efficiency, but it is realistic in terms of its capabilities and claims. It still overheats under heavy load, which for this battery class shouldn't happen, but it does at least mostly work. Thanks for watching. Next week, the plan is to do some slim power adapters. I have absolutely no expectation that any of these are going to be good. They usually sacrifice performance for thinness, but maybe I will be surprised. I have lots more adapters and power banks. I also have a very long list of suggestions, so keep them coming. I write them all down. Check the All Things website linked in the description for upcoming videos, and as always, I'll see you in the comments section. Thanks again, and goodbye.